Last fall, I was fortunate enough to take a trip with another colleague to Italy looking at the slow food movement and trying to learn how that could fit in Oklahoma or what concepts fit in Oklahoma. Not word for word concepts, but just the general ideas. And I found a lot of things. And one of the things I found was that first of all, people here generally don't have a real good feel for where their food comes from. So that's one of the things that we'd like to try to look at in Oklahoma. Gardeners generally know where part of their food comes from, but even on busy days, we don't really have a clue. And we do know that in Oklahoma, the average plate full of food travels 1,500 miles before it actually gets consumed. So trying to put that connection back between who's producing and how it's produced and getting to know the actual producer, I think it's something that can be of real value. And that's one of the things we're gonna look at. What's already in place in Oklahoma with agritourism, with farmer's markets, with food co-ops, and some alternative places besides the supermarket, your local farmer's market, which a lot of you may be familiar with. Where, where does our food come from? It's real important with kids that we begin to get that concept. A lot of them think that food comes from the grocery store or the restaurant, period. They don't know how it's produced. They don't know what animal it's from. They don't know what the plant looks like before it's harvested. And we need to put that connection back. Another thing that we'd like to look at as we go through the season this year is how to reestablish the pleasure of eating. And we need to put the connection back between enjoying the food that we're eating, relaxing, eating good food, choosing good food, choosing food that's prepared rather plainly for most days and saving the celebratory food for the more elaborate things that we can do. We've talked about that with Oklahoma Gardening and the recipes that we've used for years, um, but I realize that everybody isn't going to be preparing the same recipes and the same garden foods on a daily basis, so how can we pull that back and bring back that pleasure? Another thing that uh, is involved with the slow food movement is the idea that the food that's produced be fair. It be fair to the environment, uh, in other words, it's clean uh, for the environment, it's produced in sustainable ways, uh, it's fair to the person that produces it. Our food is often brought to us at a higher expense towards those who have processed it than those who've actually done the, the production. So how can we in the U.S. begin to look at some things that can be done to even that out? And there are some things that are going on in Oklahoma as well as across the nation. So we'll look at some of those as we go along as well. Food is closely tied to culture. And we're going to look at that to some degree. But one of the things that I saw in Italy was how closely food is tied to the Italian culture. But when you get and look at specific regions, you find that the culture is even more specific, that in one part of the country, it may be pasta. In another part of the country, seafood may pull out on more importance. And so I began to think, well, how do we tie that in Oklahoma or anywhere in the States? Because we pull our culture from so many different countries that it, what is the culture of our food? And I struggled with that for a very long time until it dawned on me that it really doesn't matter, that it goes back to that individual so that if a family has a culture, uh, then they need to be able to express that or to look at it and to make sure that it's sustained. And so we'd like to see how we can sustain not only those celebratory events, but also look at how we produce the food here and how do we sustain that part of the culture, whether it be uh, how a particular cheese is produced, a meat is produced, a vegetable is produced. How have we done that in traditional methods? Are we losing those traditional methods? Are these things that are important to us as a culture that we want to sustain and maintain? So we'd like to look and see how some of that ties together as we uh, begin to go through the season, how we can pull those in as gardeners, maybe look at producing heirloom vegetables as opposed to some of the, the more uh, processed varieties of, of seed and uh, things that have been uh, pulled off a little bit from those traditional methods, uh, whether we can look at what we're actually producing, how we can get the most value from the things that we're producing through uh, methods of preservation so that we can sustain over a longer period of time and perhaps then not have to rely so much on uh, things that are available in the supermarket that are out of season. Eating in season is a real important value to us, and I think that a lot of Americans have sort of forgotten the idea that food does grow in seasons and that perhaps having green grapes in December is not really the way we should go. So let's look at some of those things as we go throughout the year and uh, begin to, to focus in, and hopefully some of these things will be thought-provoking for you as well as for me.
For Oklahoma Gardening, this is Barbara Brown.